Welcome to Pacific Netting Products, located in Kingston, Washington. We design, manufacture, install, and service high-tech netting barriers throughout North America. With over 200 years of combined net making experience, we can build a netting barrier for virtually any application. Our high-tech netting barriers provide downstream fish passage, fish exclusion, debris control, as well as many other dynamic functions. Our barrier netting customers are typically users of water sources within our natural environment, primarily for either cooling or power generation purposes. We closely work with our customers to design, manufacture, and install application-oriented high-tech netting barriers, inclusive of the anchoring and the flotation systems. Anyone who has a water intake structure, whether it's a hydro dam or a cooling water intake facility, is going to need to work with a netting company who partners up with industry leaders in the top engineering firms to come up with solutions to protect fish from being entrained into their water intake facilities. DSM Dyneema has a long tradition of wanting to partner with leaders in their respective fields. We've had very good experience partnering with Pacific Netting Products to provide barrier solutions to their netting customers. One of the reasons that we chose Pacific Netting Products is because they really do have a hands-on approach in, in a lot of different areas. From, from a design perspective, they were hands-on. They have hands-on experience with the installation of the nets and the maintenance of the nets. And they also have uh, really a pretty good understanding of the regulatory framework from which utilities operate. So once we explained what we needed in terms of uh, a net, uh, they didn't try to sell us something that we didn't need, but they worked to try to give us a product that, uh, that, that met our needs in every way, especially uh, from a structural integrity issue, one that was going to stay there over the long haul. Dyneema material was chosen over nylon uh, because we had a concern that if there was a failure that it could end up affecting the turbines. When you select the net material in the design, the, it is very critical that the right material be chosen to make sure that you don't have a net failure that ultimately ends up impacting your operation of the turbine. The distance of the net from the intake on main generator 8 was a concern because of the, the high velocities at that close proximity to the unit. So there was a concern that uh, if, the, if the Dyneema net failed in that particular area, that there wasn't an opportunity for it to kind of sag down and relieve itself, but it would actually be pulled into the turbine and uh, create some operational issues for the turbine. The net is only about 40 feet from the intake on unit number eight. We reduced the uh, inspection frequency of the ROVs from once a month to once a quarter because we did not find any significant in, uh, net integrity issues, no rips and tears uh, of the net. The advantage of being able to do an ROV inspection once a quarter is that you cut your overall cost by uh, a fourth. The cost to do an ROV inspection is about $3,000. Typically it takes uh, us using our internal plant labor about two days to perform a net inspection. So it's about a four man day effort. The leaves do infrequently appear on the net and provide some pretty significant blockage. A significant leaf blockage on the net has not caused any structural uh, integrity issues with the net. No uh, rips or tears of the netting material itself. Okay, if, if, we, uh, if, if we were going to go through the same sort of process on another identical uh, installation or even a similar installation, I think we would go through the, a similar kind of process. We would want to do you know, some good engineering. Uh, but one thing I can tell you for sure is that we would definitely be wanting to implement the same sort of design with the same sort of materials because uh, up to this point the material has performed uh, exceptionally well and I don't think we would be looking to change our design any at all. Pepper Baker Dam produces 90 megawatts uh, of electricity uh, out of a 5200 CFS hydraulic capacity. What we service uh, with both plants at 170 megawatts is about 160,000 homes. The Upper Baker Dam was completed in 1959. The primary species that we have are sockeye. We also have native char, we have coho and other species. The first year of operation of the new floating surface collector 
of an outmigration of approximately 300,000 fish. And in the last several years, uh, records of 525,000, 545,000, and this year a new record of 650,000 fish. The nets are a critical component of our downstream fish passage system, without which the floating surface collector simply would not function. The latest iteration of this net produced by Pacific Netting Product has been pivotal in reaching the new downstream passage record this year, 40% over our previous record. Majority of the fish migrate near the surface, but we have found through the years that fish do dive down. They will go down the 100 feet into the intake. So clearly fish are not only stuck near the surface, so it is important to have the net to go to the bottom. Puget Sound Energy is required by FERC license to have systems that will allow and assist with uh, juvenile fish moving downstream. With all the salmon species that we have in the reservoir, it's critical for us to be able to safely move downstream migrants past the dams and get them down to the Skagit River so they can continue their journey out to sea. Downstream migrating juvenile salmon is as they enter the forebay on their seaward migration and counter the barrier net which is 1,800 feet long, 300 feet at its deepest point, with more than five acres of mesh to create a full barrier to prevent entrainment of those fish into the intakes. They're led along the face of that net to the net transition structure, which leads them up from the vertical face of the guide net to the entrance of the FSC, the relatively shallow entrance of the floating surface collector, from which they are then collected and transported around the dam. We're standing on the western flank of the North Cascade Mountains, about 120 miles north of the city of Seattle, Washington. To my left is the Four Bay, which is the entrance water into Baker Dam, which is behind me. We are on the upstream side of the dam. At this location, salmon migrate from upstream and of course, they cannot get through the dam. The dam is a, a permanent barrier. We were contracted about two years ago to build a barrier net to, to catch the fish and root the fish into a fish collector that is then, the fish are then transported into trucks and trucked around two dams, the Upper Baker Dam and the Lower Baker Dam. The fish guide net that we built for Upper Baker was manufactured out of two different mesh sizes, a 3 32nd inch mesh and a quarter inch mesh. That mesh size was determined by fish biologists, by nymphs, by uh, different fish agencies based on the size of fish that they needed to capture and guide into the, into the uh, fish collector. The uh, fiber that we chose to build this particular net with, based on the, the parameters of the environment and the conditions of the of the overall system, the fiber we chose was. Dynamic. What is vitally important to make a barrier net successful? It's the formation of the complete team at the onset of the project. PMP has this team in place already. We will work with your organization to assure a successful design, material selection, high tech manufacturing methods, installation, and service well into the future. When you find yourself in that uncomfortable situation where you must comply with regulatory agencies, you can't afford to make mistakes. Failure is a very expensive option. So make sure you choose Dyneema and make sure you choose the experienced team at Pacific Netting Products.